hopefully you guys didn't uh, miss me too much. I know that uh, we took a little break there because of 4th of July, but um, I don't know, did any of you work during the 4th of July weekend? Joe Coy, did you work during the 4th of July weekend? I work seven days a week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure I was taking phone calls. There you go. Very nice. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll have to admit to you guys that I actually took the weekend off. Um, uh, and, you know, even though a lot of things were closed, uh, it's kind of funny, you know. Uh, I, I think they were just – I was just on a manager's meeting for corporate, and they were talking about how some agents are actually doing open houses illegally in Orange County. And um, so anyways, but, uh, you, know, you know, so some people said – some agents go, wow, what a disregard for people's health. And then other agents said, um, well, maybe they look like they're the only ones working to the public. So two ways of looking at things. But 4th of July, you know, they closed the beaches on Saturday. Friday, I was at Sunset Beach the whole day, uh, you know, getting tanned and jumping in and out of the water. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, having a little drink on the beach um so you know what uh somebody tells you that you know the beaches are going to be closed saturday then you go you go friday uh, and then saturday spent the day on a boat in newport harbor and uh, then watched the fireworks on the way home so that was pretty nice so took a good weekend off but anyways um let's go ahead and get started here i wanted to share two quotes with you guys and, and share something about our so our company actually has a manager's meeting once a month. And then ever since we, since COVID started, they have a semi managers meeting um, on Zoom. And that goes for about an hour. So every Tuesday before this meeting, John and myself are on this manager's call on Zoom. Um, the other thing is, so that once a month, uh, previously once a month, we'd meet in person uh, at 730 in the morning for about two hours or John might correct me, maybe almost three hours um, at the Bellflower office, we would sit there and go through a, a monthly manager's meeting. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, but uh, I thought about this quote here from Clement Stone. He says, sales are contingent upon the attitude of the salesperson, not the attitude of the prospects. And, and so, um, you, you know, I was thinking to myself, if any of you have recently either if you're a lady or or if your lady has taken you there or who knows maybe maybe uh, david Grimm has a pair of uh gucci loafers at home um you, you know uh if you've ever been to the gucci store one thing that i that i've noticed is the salespeople there only concern themselves with one thing and that's making sales they don't they don't get caught up too much in your details I mean, they do ask you like, what shoe size are you? And you know, uh, what color you'd like that pair of shoes in, but they don't get caught up in the real small details of it. I think their, their end goal, and yeah, you might not be able to compare that to real estate sales, but you know, sometimes there's people that walk in there that spend 15, 20, $30,000 on, on things, multiple things. And um, you know, the, that salesperson makes a sale. Um, so just something that I wanted to share, it's contingent upon the attitude of the salesperson, not the attitude of the prospect. Um, I've had it before where I've gone to places and I love salespeople. Uh, I'm the easiest person that you could ever sell anything to. I just have so much empathy for fellow salespeople, people in all different industries. And, but I've been with a salesperson before that didn't have a good attitude that wasn't you know, happy and ready to go. And it just really just, you know, soured the moment for me and, and made me look elsewhere. So, you know, right now, keep in mind, guys, forget about right now, in the entire history of sales, your attitude has to be positive and strong and happy and with a big smile on your face and ready to serve. And, you, you know, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I had a mask on and I meet my clients to show them a property. And my client goes, hey, Benny, how, how are you? Good. Is there something wrong? No. Why? She goes, oh, because you just said good like that, like really, you know. So, you know, 
check yourself every time you're going to go out and meet with a client um, in the morning, look in the mirror, smile, you know, clap if you have to wake up, put on a, a happy face and get out there and give an attitude because I'm telling you, if you're walking around and you, you know, I asked somebody the other day, how are you doing? And they said, I'm oh, just okay. I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to buy a pencil from that person. So um, success is about going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Winston Churchill said that. Um, and, you know, I got a lot of phone calls last night. Benny, are we going to close the office? Oh, my God, Benny, what does this mean? Oh, Benny, this and that. You know, guys, you know, do your own research, do your own homework, and don't always believe what people tell you. And the other thing is, you know what, if you, if you want to, if you believe in something, you're going to make it happen. And if you don't believe in it, you're not going to make it happen. Well, what did I just share with you guys? They said beaches were going to be closed Saturday and Sunday, 4th of July weekend. What does Benny do? I wanted to go to the beach one of those days. I wasn't given the option. So what did I do? Friday, I drove over there. And guess what? I called Huntington State Beach and said, um, hey, is parking going to be open? No, it's going to be closed because of Governor Newsom's order. I drove through Sunset Beach and found a parking space in less than two minutes. Walked to the liquor store, bought chips, ice, soda. I was candid with you, a little bottle of wine. And went to the beach on Friday because they told me it wasn't going to be possible Saturday and Sunday. Right? So, so you know what? I could have been a failure and said, you know what? I'm not going to go to the beach at all 4th of July weekend. Right? And I know that sounds, you might be thinking in your head right now, that sounds stupid. Benny, you know, going to the beach isn't a big deal. But you know what? For me, it was a big deal. It was 4th of July. I wanted to be at the beach. And so there you have it. Another thing, at these manager meetings, they'll bring in a guest speaker once in a while. Well, Art Martell is a author of a couple business books here. And one thing that he shared with us was these treks for, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose it now. Uh, Mount, can somebody help me? What's the big, Mount Everest. Mount Everest, um, I didn't know this, but some of these treks, people pay upwards of $85,000 to go up there. I didn't know that. That to me is like, that's amazing. I mean, that. I can go to Dubai first class uh, on an A380 with a private suite on Emirates, spend probably two weeks in Dubai and wouldn't end up spending 85,000. But yet people spend 85,000 to climb Mount Everest, right? He said that this guy, Dr. Beck's Weather, or maybe Dr. Beck Weather is one of the two. He wrote a book, maybe you'll want to look into it. It's called Left to Die, Dr. Beck Weathers. And he says, this guy paid 85,000 to climb up the mountain, right? doctor and they got so far and they have gotten so far but they say that mount everest by 2 p.m you got to start coming back down right because it could get dangerous later on in the evening heavy winds uh heavy snowfall whatever they had gone so far this whole team that they didn't want to come back at two they figured we could reach the top by five o'clock maybe and then come down who's in for it and everybody agreed so they go, they reach the top, they start coming down. And I, I can't remember the speed of the winds, but it was like something aggressive, like 75 mile an hour winds, maybe even stronger than that. A lot of the guys couldn't make it anymore. They're like dying uh, from frostbite, like hypothermia, right? Dr. Uh, Be Beckweathers couldn't, couldn't move on and, and he, he got stuck there. The rest of the people that could make it went down and whatever. Other people came and searched for him. They found him, including a doctor found him. He, he, was, he still had a pulse, but he said, you know what? Carrying him down will risk our lives. So we just have to leave him for dead. They went down the hill or down the mountain, called the dude's wife, the man's wife, and said, you know what? Sorry, your husband has passed. He died on Mount Everest. Dr. Beckweathers, alive today, says that something in, inside his mind told him, you could die by laying here, or you could die moving. Okay, think about that. You could die by laying here, or die by moving. 
however he could. He had frostbite to his nose. I was looking at pictures of him today. He's missing. He's missing a complete arm. His other hand, he, he, it's not even a hand anymore. His face has complete facial re reconstruction, but he made it back down to the camp. As bad as he was, as people thought he was dead, he decided to either die moving or die by laying there. So regards, in regards to the questions that I got, Benny, are we gonna be closed? Did you hear the news? You know, the news, some, all this stuff. Guys, I spent the entire last weekend eating at Lazy Dog, Lucille's, Another, actually, yesterday, David Grimm and I took lunch on a patio. Lazy Dog created a, 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 they have their own patio that they built originally, right, with the construction, but then they put canopies into the parking lot and tents. Same thing at Lucille's. I went to Lucille's at Long Beach Town Center. Um, into the little street there, they, they, put, they blocked off the street and put patio and canopies up. Those places are not closing down. They closed down beauty salons and the gym next door to us, right? But the restaurants, as long as they can still have outdoor dining, they're still staying open. So you gotta really listen to these things and really fact check because the media and the news is gonna make you believe that you need to go home, lock your door and forget about life. I was listening to, I like to listen to public radio and David Grimm's probably gonna laugh at me right now for, for admitting that, but I do, I like to listen to NPR sometimes. And this guy was saying on Saturday, you, you know, that people are like, I don't have money to pay my bills. I have to go out and work, right? And he says, well, what good is it making money if you're not going to be around to be able to spend it, right? Um, I, I think, yeah, the guy does have some point. But in the manager's meeting today, they said, well, are you essential, are you essential to your family? That's the question. Are you essential? Are you essential for your family? Are you the one that provides for your family? If the answer is yes, you're going to have to do like Dr. Beck's weather or, or Beck weathers and die moving. We're all going to die guys. There's the, the, your taxes and death are guaranteed, but um, you know, we're, we're all going to die. You could, you could shower yourself. You could wrap yourself in a plastic bag and spray hand sanitizer over your head for the next 60 days. And God forbid the Amazon guy throws a package through your door that has COVID-19 in it. You will be in the hospital. And you know what? You might even end up in the ICU and go as far as being on a respirator and being on a, um, you know, hospital induced coma. And then two months later, they'll say, hey, you know what? Benny Chavez made it. He was on his deathbed. His, his family made him sign a power of attorney, make a will on the bed and everything. And the bastard's over there walking, right? You just never know, guys. I've shared with you the story about the guy who would never go swimming, afraid of swimming, goes on vacation, dies in his hotel room from a glass of water, choked on a glass of water. So you never know when you're going to die. Um, between you and me, it's business as usual. Sales are crazy. I said it before. Um, it's not just me. It's everybody in here. You got Marjorie Tyson with four open escrows right now. You got Feng and Nancy working on multiple deals. I think Nancy just closed another deal. You got the Morales team kicking butt everywhere. Renee. Oh my gosh, Renee, my success story. Rosie. I mean, every single one of you is working multiple deals right now. The market is hot. It's, it's all going to be dependent upon you and whether how you want to look at it. Um, my other superstar, Bernadette, four escrows, okay? And she's, the other day she told me she drove to Green Valley. Do you guys know how far that is? That's crazy. Don, Don Roberts is right now, I'm a little upset with him for not being on the meeting, but he's right now down in Menifee showing a $200,000 house. I told him, you're crazy for showing that place. I want to do it. But he's doing it. So whether you're wrong or you're right, or you're right or you're wrong, whatever, however that goes, guys, there's business out there and um, we can attest to it. So enough of that little rant. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, does anybody have any buyer seller wants and needs? Any new listings or any new buyers that you're working with that are looking for something? Anybody there?
No. Okay. Um, oh, man, this one expired. Let me see if I can log back in real quick. Oh, yeah, there it is. Cool. Can you, one can you guys see my MLS screen? Are you able to see that? Yeah? Yes, Benny. Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, real quick, I'm just going to share one listing with you guys because that's the only listing that we have right now in the office, guys, and it's a good one. 590,000, three bedroom, two bath uh, in the city of Norwalk. Norwalk moves really fast. Uh, I actually showed this listing two years ago when it was last sold, and one of our agents, Rosa Montoya, just got it. Um, 3-2, asking 590, 1,500 per feet in the city of Norwalk. John Greer, I hope this wasn't in your uh, walking farm. Well, if it was, it doesn't matter, right? Because Rosie, uh, sorry, uh, Rosa got it, so we're okay. But this is a really nice property, guys. The inside is, I mean, actually inside and outside has been heavily updated. One drawback, it sits on Pioneer Boulevard. But other than that, it's a really nice property. Uh, that's Rosa Montoya. Uh, three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet, asking 590 in the city of Norwalk. As you can see, fully remodeled inside and outside. So um, that's all we have currently active. And as you can see, guys, uh, pending is in escrow listings for our office, we've got six. So um, at least that's listings in our MLS. So let's go back to... The numbers. First off, I want to congratulate Feng and Nancy for joining the Berkshire Hathaway President's Circle. Um, that's a gross commission earned of higher than 185000 So congratulations to them on their amazing production. Uh, next, we have Mo Abraham that uh, joined uh, also the President's Circle, um, which, you know, again, you just mentioned the qualifications for that. Congratulations, Mo. And then last but not least, we have um, Christina Furneaux joining the Leading Edge Society. Um, that is production of a, a GCI of 120,000 or more. So congratulations to all of you. I know you are all celebrated um, at the, uh, you know, unfortunately because of COVID, we had to have sort of a virtual awards gala, but they went down there on Tuesday and received their awards in person with Dennis Rosas. And then they were celebrated again on Thursday uh, in a virtual awards ceremony, which actually turned out to be kind of cool. Um, they had like a game show at the beginning and they had people, you know, answering questions and stuff like that. So it was pretty neat for those of you that were able to watch that. Hey, Benny. Yeah, go ahead. I think Ludie Carroll was also one of the award winners there. You know what, I, I, oh, so she must have not attended because I, I didn't have her on there. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations, Ludie. Um, if you weren't able to attend, they'll probably be sending you an award um, by mail is what I'm guessing. Yeah. It, you, you know, and I have to apologize, uh, Ludie, if that is correct. Um, you, you know, it's just because of it being virtual like that. And it was just a, a honestly a very last minute um, thing that corporate plan. Um, so it really, uh, I, I know that for myself and John, we're kind of like, when is this going to be? Do we have to be there? What's the, you know, and no, yeah. you guys can't be there. And it was very, very last minute and very uh, complex. So, but uh, congratulations to all of you. Um, moving on uh, for the month so far, we've got 12 pending escrows. So congrats to Robert Anyam, uh, the Morales team, Renee, um, Marjorie Tyson, uh, Feng and Nancy, Rosie, and um, oh yeah, there's there's uh, Feng and Nancy again. So congrats to you all. Uh, as far as closings for the month, uh, you know we are on the 14th. So uh, so far we've got seven. Uh, I'll, I'll make it eight. I closed one last night. So uh, next meeting you'll see that one up there. Uh, so so far we've got eight closings for the month. Uh, of, of July and we're on the 14th. So we still have, um, you know, a lot going on. Uh, I'm guessing we're probably going to hit about 20 closed sides by the end of the month with what's pending. So congrats to everybody. Keep up the great work. Again, uh, the ones that with closings, Marjorie Tyson with two, Christina Frenoa with two, uh, Don Roberts with one, and Renee with one. So congrats to you all. 
All right. Do we have Christy Rye on the call or? Yes, sir. Hey, there she is. Hi, guys. Woo! I'm back. All right. I'm back. Well, I was back last week, um, but you guys didn't have a meeting. But, Correct. Um, but I'm doing meetings better this week. Last week was a little rough getting through them, but this week is, um, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, well, let's just say I'm doing better, you know? So oh. for those of you who don't know, I lost my mother. I lost my mother to COVID. Um, and it's been a rough ride. I'm actually in an RV uh, quarantined with my, um, my sister because my, my um, you know, my mother did have COVID and with the services and stuff, just to make sure that, because uh, my, my sister literally draped herself over my mother's body and um, during the viewing. So not to be down, Debbie Downer, but, but so just, just to be safe before we, we go and see um, extended family, I'm quarantining myself with her in the RV. And we've actually, it's been great because we've been catching up and um, she's healthy as an ox. It's been long enough, but we're just staying a little bit late longer in the RV just to be safe. Yeah. Um, and, so, and, 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 you know, it's a good thing you are because once you come back, we're all going to line up around you and give you a big fat hug. <sighs> Benny, do so. I miss hugging? Oh my gosh. You know, times like this, you need hugs and there's no, there's no person, you know what I mean? There's just, it can't yeah. happen. It's just, you know, it's just rough, but you know, well, it is you, what it is. And you're, you're in our hearts and minds at all times. Believe me, uh, I've, I've, uh, you know, had a lot of people come and ask me and, and you know, uh, I, I hope that you did receive them. One of our agents even sent you flowers. Um, oh, yes. so, so yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and I reached out to her right away and you guys should have seen my house, the flowers, it was, and plants, orchids. I mean, it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, the support. So now let's get back to business. Okay. Cause my mama wants me to kick ass out here and that's, and nice. I'm going to make her proud up in heaven. So mama's back and I'm ready to just, you know, kick some butt and get you guys some deals. So I wanted to share with you in case you don't know now with, now with the um, COVID on the rise again, and there's the California shutdown and everything, agents may be working more from home. And I just want to let you know, we do so much that's virtual. But you know, we also, let's say you want a property profile and you want the hard copy. We can, we can create the hard copy and we can have it dropped off at your home. We can have it FedEx, mailed, or if it's a 911, and it's got it, you've got to get it right away. And time permits, we can have a courier deliver it to you or someone from the ride team. We're always willing to go above and beyond and uh, do whatever it takes to get to you your material. So just, you don't have to do everything virtual. Some agents still want that hard copy. It's great presentation value. You know, and we can customize the front cover for you. I do it for quite a few agents in your office. I know the Grim team, we do it for them quite a bit. And it's just, it's just kind of a, it makes you, it separates you from your competition. And if you really, really, want to knock it out of the park, get a photo of the property, send it to us and let us take out the stock photo that we put, but rather put a picture of their home on the cover. I'm telling you, you guys, it is a game changer. When the, that potential seller opens up that package that you just handed them and it has a current photo, not one taken off of Google. I have many agents say, I oh, just grab it off of you know, Google. But if they've painted their house, did new landscaping, have a car in the driveway that they no longer own, you just lost credibility. So you want that wow factor. But if you, if you demand to take the picture off Google, of course, you're the boss. I'm going to do whatever you want. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, this is not something that Orange Coast Title does. As David knows, this is something that the Rye team does themselves. Like we do it from um, our office. So, so please don't call the office or send an email to customer service saying, hey, I want one of your custom profiles. <laughs> they're going to be like, what? So just remember, you, you order the profile through me um, or through Keegan via text, most preferably. And then from there, we get the profile going. And then I have Ricardo work on customizing the cover sheet for you. And then he'll, he'll spiral bound it. He'll put a clear coat co uh, top and then he'll put a nice uh, vinyl backing in black looks really good so there's that and I also wanted to let you know that we have the ability now to run farms data 
properties specifically with equity. So if you can go after individuals who have a lot of equity, then you can let they can leverage that equity to maybe downsize or buy a second home or whatever the case may be. So I'm really happy to announce that we have equity farms. Again, this does not come from Orange Coast Title. This comes from the Rye team. And then lastly, my other uh, target market, this came up by talking to an agent that took a listing in Long Beach. She uh, listed a condo. The condominium is listed at 800,000. It's on ocean, but it hasn't, she hasn't gotten any offers yet. And I asked her, I go, why do you think? Cause she called me, she goes, I gotta get this thing in escrow. She said, well, the uh, HOAs are 900 a month. I'm like, ooh, wow, okay. She said, but I called an agent that sells a lot on Ocean and I asked her specifically too in this building, because every building has its own personality, if you know Long Beach. She said, in this building, where do most of the buyers come from? And this agent that's been around over 30 years said, well, in my experience, it's normally seniors who are downsizing, who want, you know, don't want the maintenance, and um, want to retire on the beach. I'm like, wow, what a wonderful concept. And I said, okay, babe, so where are those buyers? Where, where are actually those sellers that become your buyers? Where, where do they live? And so she was going to go and find out what areas in Long Beach they're moving to. And she said, they are typically sellers in Long Beach that have more house than they need. I said, find the area and I will pull it by assessed value. So let's say they've got a property they can sell for 800 to a mill but their assessed value is 200, 300,000. I can find those parties. And why is that important? It's called Proposition 6090. Those sellers can take their tax base with them to that, re uh, that replacement property, and therefore it will cushion the blow of that uh, HOA. Does that make sense, you guys? Yes. So she's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. So she's jumping on it. She's going to get me the data or the neighborhoods and I'm going to pull the data and send it to her and look for her next buyer. And if, can you imagine, Benny, if she lists their primary, how great would it be if she found the buyer? Then she puts them in her listing and double ends that. Are you kidding? It's beautiful. So thinking outside the box, Let's, let's strategize and put some deals together, you guys. I want to help you get listings. And how beautiful would it be if you double-ended? Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Okay? So yeah, totally. that's the Christy Rye and the Rye team tips for the week. And if you have anything else that you need help on, please, we're just a phone call away. And like I said, mama's back. You know, Christy, uh, um, I love that. You know, guys, everything works. You know that. Everything works. You just got to do it and do it consistently day in and day out. Um, but you know one thing, Chrissy, talking about that, how you said, what if she gets the buyer and then gets a listing and gets another, right? Yeah. You, you, you know, guys, whenever I have a down week and we all have them, I like to look back at my most highest sell ever and, and how much money I made on that. And, and then it's funny because it was the first time I ever double ended a deal. But then I also think back on that same weekend when I did that open house, how the first person that showed up a month later ended up giving me another listing. Um, so, so on one weekend open house, I double ended and picked up a listing. And then when I add all that money up and I go, Oh my gosh, I could do that in one month. Oh my God. And so, so, so you're absolutely right. You know, don't, don't ever um, think, Oh, I'm just doing one deal. No, there's a potential for more. Uh, yes. An old Long Beach broker used to say, Every listing has a buddy, sometimes two. So whenever you see a competitor's listing go up, go find the buddy. They're out there. Uh, I guarantee you somebody goes, you, you know, because it happens, right? We, we're, we, you, I, I guess that's human nature. You see somebody get a brand new car, you go, you know what, maybe it's time for me to upgrade, right? You're thinking, you know what, maybe we should sell. Yeah, well, yeah. our neighbor just listed. Yeah, let's do it too. So, you know, just keep that in mind, guys. Christy Rye is a, a, a fountain of knowledge. Uh, I, I was going to call you a, a ocean of knowledge, but somebody gave me that nickname a couple years ago. So uh, we'll just call you a fountain of knowledge. I like that. Fountain. Oh, actually, sorry, like not that. the ocean. They said I was the sea of knowledge. There you go. So, um, but, but yes, guys, please use Christy Rye as a resource. But don't forget, if you do, you know, make sure that you write her in on your next transaction as your title rep. Um, Please. 
she, you know, it, 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 you know, um, that's just the way it is. You know, uh, you, you, you get, you give to get, right. So, um, sure. let's keep that in mind, guys. Christy, um, like I said, our hearts are with you. We can't thank wait you. to see you again. Um, Black we life. love you, miss you. Um, and we thank you for all of your help and support over the years. Um, thanks again. Thanks for being thank on the call. Thank you, Benny. All right, thanks, Mr. Guys. Money. Yay. Can I get Mr. Money on? Hey, Benny. Thanks hey, for how's it going? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so I'll start with the rates. Um, rates in the last you know, week or two weeks, they've come down about another 0.125%. They just keep getting lower. Uh, the VA, you're looking at about 2.75, a lot of times with a credit towards your closing costs. Um, I just helped somebody where we covered all their closing costs and they got a 2.75% rate on a, on a wow. purchase transaction. So incredible rates right now. Uh, FHA, you're looking at about 2.75% as well. Uh, that's assuming excellent credit, of course. Uh, conventional mortgage, you're looking at about 2.875, 3.0, uh, depending on the scenario. Uh, that's for a conforming loan amount, 510,000 or less. Uh, if it's a high balance loan amount, you're looking at about 3.125, uh, 3.25%. Uh, just incredible rates across the board. Um, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was forbearance. So the forbearance guidelines are constantly changing. It seems like every week there's some sort of adjustment. Uh, the VA adjusted their policy yesterday. Uh, they're the most aggressive or lenient. Um, with the VA, you can actually be on a forbearance plan um, and you don't have to catch yourself up. You don't have to go on a, on a payment plan to pay the past due amount. You immediately qualify for a refinance or for another purchase as long as you can document that the reason you went into the forbearance plan was because your income was impacted by the COVID. So there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of the forbearance plan, but they don't necessarily, their job hasn't necessarily been impacted or their income hasn't been impacted. But for the people who um, are going into forbearance, their veteran and their income was impacted, then they can purchase or refinance right away, no additional like stipulations. So I feel like the VA is always taking care of the veterans um, and, and trying to make the, the loans as easy as possible for them. So that's a good one. Uh, I have had some questions recently uh, from business owners if they could use the uh, payback protection program funds for down payment and closing costs, and you cannot. Um, but once you have two monthly bank statements that don't show that deposit, then we would no, not, no longer know uh, the origin of that money. And in that event, you would be able to use it for your down payment. But if you just received it in the last 60 days, um, you cannot use that for your down payment and your closing costs. Um, surprisingly, I've been getting that, that question a lot. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is jumbo loans. So with everything that's going on, jumbo lenders have tightened their lending standards substantially. Uh, down payment requirements have increased, FICO score requirements, reserve requirements, just kind of across the board, um, their guidelines have tightened up. It's uh, impacting a lot of your, your uh, jumbo clients. So I see more people going to the second trust deed option. So they'll use a first and a second combination. Um, when you do a first and a second combination, you're going off of your standard uh, agency guidelines for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The second trustee lender does have their own requirements as well, but they tend to be a lot more lenient than jumbo investors. So if you have a client that's you know, looking at a price point, whether if it's in a low cost area, let's say San Bernardino or Riverside, loan amount's gonna be above 510, they're gonna need to use a jumbo loan or a second trustee in combination with the first mortgage. And then in LA and Orange County, if the loan amount's above 765,000, again, you're gonna to need to use either a jumbo loan or the second trustee option. So um, I see it being very beneficial to a lot of people using the second trustee. If you have any clients that would like to explore that option, get some more information, uh, let me know. But uh, that's what I got for you this morning. Have anything you want me to touch on, Benny? Or uh, No, you, you yeah. know what? I just wanted to mention, everybody, um, you guys remember I, I said that we got overbid on a property. Uh, the appraisal just came back uh, 3500 less than what the value was. And it's funny. I look at it. I go, oh, I'll, I'll get my seller to accept this. Not a big deal. But the listing agent calls me and goes, Hey, my lender just sent the appraisal over. There's a couple things that you got to repair, peeling paint and, um, you know, clear, clearing the debris at the uh, um, crawl space. She goes, and then, you know, it didn't appraise. And I, guys, you got to really open 
you know, dial yourself in to listen to what people are telling you when you're talking to them. Because I clearly said to her, don't worry, I had already prepped my seller. She will agree to go at the appraised price. Well, before we hung up, she says to me, oh, and I have the buyer, he's gonna come in with the difference in cash, okay? <laughs> and I'm just like, what? She didn't hear what I just said. Well, all right, I'm gonna zip my mouth shut and, and wait till we get there and have her bring in the money, I guess. You know, I told her the, at the beginning of the call, hey, yeah, I got, I got the appraisal from your lender. Yeah, um, don't worry, I'm gonna, I, I, I told my client to prepare for this and whatever. And she just, you know, oh, my client's going to bring in the money, blah, blah, blah. Like, what the hell? So anyways, um, just know that, guys, that, you know, as this market is inching up, some of these appraisers are going to need some time to catch up with that, um, with those values. So you might have some appraisals be a little bit short. In this case, 3500 that's a easy sell to any seller. Problem is when they're 10, 20 grand apart, those are the ones that are really hard to, to get, get um, you know, seller to go with, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, one thing that I will admit, um, and Joe, you, you know that New American Funding has always been pretty good with appraisals. Um, and one, one thing um, that uh, a New American Funding uh, appraiser, Rocky, said to me many years ago was, look, if the place is upgraded, I could bring it in all day long within reason. You know, sometimes I'm off by 20 grand, but the place is upgraded, I'll bring it in. The problem is when it looks like the 1980s, then I can't do anything about that. So just something to consider when you're out there, guys, um, accepting these higher offers, um, you know, keep in mind that some of these appraisal, appraisals might not come in at value. So just something to consider that goes along with lending. So thanks again, Joe. Thanks Thank for being you. on the call. Uh, let me see here. Give me a sec, guys. Um, this happens to me once in a while. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Hey, Benny. Yeah, go ahead, John. You know what? Maybe while you're trying to set up there. I'll yeah, go ahead. Just to. Um, you know, say good morning, everybody. I, I, um, I really, it was like a gut punch to me. Um, like, uh, the meeting earlier today, like getting kicked by a horse when I heard that they're closing everything back down or most things. Um, but you know what, what, after I stopped and thought about it, uh, the thing of it is, is that it's not changing anything the way that we've been doing business in the last few months. So, once you get around it a bit, I, you know, it's totally disappointing to me. Um, it, I was actually uh, disappointed when um, they started to open things up and I'm getting excited. Hey, all right, you know, this thing's going to get behind us. We can move forward. And then they, uh, st the cases started climbing. And, oh my gosh, that to me was a gut punch. And then now that things are closing, I felt like, you know, that, needed to happen just to uh slow down the coronavirus but you know what once you get over it benny i love what you were saying about keeping a smile on your face and being positive and uh for us there really isn't um any that really has nothing to do with what we've been doing already uh in preparation for virus um i have i have to throw out there too is um uh because they were kind of talking about what your office doing for you know to to be safe for the coronavirus well you know i i i did try to into put glass around uh the cubicles and stuff there where your desks are for some of you and i i it, it came back that there is no plexiglass i know i've told some of you that but there is absolutely no plexiglass available anywhere um, and what they couldn't even give me a quote because they didn't know how much it would cost um, once it did what you know they started getting it back on the market so you know it, it's not like we haven't given things thought or trying to do what we can but the best the, the, really the best thing is, is as much as you can try to work from home and uh, and, and, and it doesn't put you in, into harm's way but anyway that that Vinny, that's what I wanted to say and then 
I know you've got an agenda, so I'll save the other stuff uh, if we have time, okay? You got it. You got it. Um, give me a second, guys. I'm, I don't know why I'm having trouble exiting this. For some weird reason, it, it does this once in a while. Well, you know what, Benny? I yeah. Still, still working then. Is that uh, I thought it was really interesting that um, one of the uh, managers had brought up about open house signs um, in their neighborhood, and I, I didn't investigate because we were we were going on, on a mission to get out out of here. But I saw one in my neighborhood too over the weekend, and, and I'm thinking. What's going on? That's not right. And and even though you could say, yeah, you know, um, they're being aggressive and they're working hard, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is they're not doing the right thing. They're they're, they're they're the rules are no open house and, and you're you're attracting people uh into a bad situation, the public, including yourself. And 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 so is that the type of agent that you'd want to deal with is, is somebody that doesn't follow the rules, you know? So I'll tell you, we, we've been without the open houses and, and just because somebody else put some signs up doesn't make it right. And, and, when, and when the bottom line was, when they got to that one that the other manager was talking about, it said, please make an appointment or by appointment only. There was nobody there. And you think, you know what, you, get, you, you got somebody driving all over, you know, the, the countryside and, and then when you get there, it's by appointment only. And you're like, oh my gosh. So think about that one. I'll turn, I'll turn it back to you, Benny. All right. Yeah. You know, guys, I'm sorry. I'm having a little bit of a malfunction here. I don't know if it's my, let me try to turn off my mouse and see if that might do it. If not, I'm going to have to just leave it on this screen that we're on. Do we have uh, anybody from Property ID on at the moment? Or Stephanie Pagan? Let me see. Steph? Okay, good. I got it. Oh, man, that was great. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. Yes. Sweet. So, no, uh, Stephanie, are you on there? No, no, Steph. All right. Uh, property ID, guys. Just keep in mind, Stephanie Pagan, for all your home warranty. You know, she tries to make it on our calls as much as she can, um, but sometimes, you know, she's got multiple offices. You know, it's funny, but Zoom. You know, I remember John saying to Stephanie, "Oh, you know," or, or probably to Christy, one of the two oh man, you know, uh, it, it must be easier now with Zoom. Actually, it became harder because now uh, she could do a lot more meetings than she used to be able to. The only thing is a lot of them are at the same time or they're back to back. So these ladies are sponsored, including uh, Cesar Lomely uh, from Property ID. So just uh, wanted to share that. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention with you guys, John Greer wanted me to talk about today was... Um, what what are the things that you're doing today to show property? Um, you, you know, what are you doing with your with your sellers? What are you doing with your buyers? So guys, um, nothing has really changed um, with, with your sellers. It's still, um, you know, making sure that they sign that um, PEADS, right? Um, that, that just kind of clears you from being in trouble if somebody, somebody were to get coronavirus. Um, and you know, your seller would get coronavirus or anybody that lives on the property. The other thing is with your buyers, you got to still sign the PEADV that you're a visitor. Um, one thing with that form is you can add multiple addresses if you're doing multiple showings on that day, but you can't, it cannot be used again the following day. So, um, it could be something where your client signs it like tonight at eight o'clock at night for a showing tomorrow at 10 a.m. But after that day, it can't be used again. You'll have to redraw a new one. So just keep that in mind. Another thing is with that PADV again, is if you open an escrow and you do a home inspection and your clients are going to be there, you got to draw another one up. I know it's a pain in the neck. I know it's, it's um, to me, it's pointless. But uh, I just closed a transaction with another big name franchise brokerage. And for their files, they want a PADV 
for every time the agent or the buyers were at that property or an inspector or an appraiser, it doesn't matter, they, they want that. Um, and with your listings, I would highly recommend that you tell your seller, look, we're gonna put the property on the market on Tuesday with no showings until Saturday from 12 to four. This way you're not at the property during that, those hours. I come in, I'll meet people there, I'll make sure there's only one family coming in at a time. I'll provide them hand sanitizer when they walk in. Um, when, they, when the last party that, that comes to see it uh, leaves, I'll wipe down all your counters, wipe, wipe down all your doorknobs, spray some Lysol around, and this way we just knock it out in one day. Believe me guys, there's enough business out there and enough buyers out there where this will work if you price the listing the right way. Um, you don't have to do multiple showings at different times throughout the week. You could just say one day, 12 to four, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is, come down, no need for an appointment, go direct, just send us your PEA DV and you're good to go. So just something to think about. Um, the other thing is this Thursday, guys, I'm gonna peel back the curtains um, on how I uh, use Facebook and candidly, uh, I was talking to Cecilia, uh, one of our new agents here at the office, and showed her how over five years, with just one person that I made contact with, I went on and made about 11 or 12 transactions uh, with the income earnings of over $140,000. So um, yes, it was not in one month, and yes, it was not in one year. It was over the course of five years, but wouldn't you like to have something giving you 140000 over five years? Um, just from this one prospecting method that you could almost set and forget in a way. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. Also, very surprising, if you do join, um, you'll see how much money, thousands, I have personally spent on Facebook advertising, and I will show you those accounts so you can actually see that I'm not just BSing you, that I am telling you the truth, that this actually works, and I put my money where my mouth is. So, all right. To end the, the, the meeting, and I'm gonna go real fast with this, guys. Hopefully I don't lose any of you on this, but um, real quick, I wanted to name this the topic, uh, sorry, the name the to <laughs> give the topic the name of do your job. And the reason for this, guys, is we've had a lot of new office, uh, agents join the office, um, and candidly, two have already left. Um, and one of the recurring thoughts that I, that or, or things that were shared with me was, hey, I've been in the business for one, two, three, five, six, nine years, and I've never made a sale, right? And one of the things I preach to you guys daily, new and old alike, is don't get caught up in the details, right? As I was sharing at the beginning of the meeting, when you go to the Gucci store, right, the, the salesperson doesn't get caught up in your details. They, they say, yeah, Size 10 shoe, yeah. how does that fit? Good, great. Will, will you be using your Amex card today or your MasterCard, right? It, it's not about getting caught up in all the details of the escrow. It's about putting people in escrow and putting homes on the market and putting those in the escrow. All the other details, you know what? They're all gonna work themselves out or you're gonna have to put out fires, but don't get too consumed by these details that you get stuck and you don't move on to the next one. And here's the problem, right? and I, I have it, every, every agent in the industry has it, is sometimes you get so caught up in the details and the fires that you don't continue prospecting, right? I was sharing with an agent last night. I said, you know what? If you had 10 deals in escrow right now, would you make time to go show that one buyer? The, the, oh, you know, we want a fireplace. We, if we don't get a fireplace, we don't want a house. Sorry, I don't have time for you. I got 10 deals going. I've got 20 other prospects in my pipeline. I don't have time for you. Sorry. So don't get caught up in the, those details. But anyways, I wanted to go kind of like a quick refresher of what I would recommend to you if you were a brand new agent. And this applies to everybody, okay? New and old alike, experience and not experience. Number one, mirror and study the best. What are the top producers in your office doing? What are the top producers in other offices doing? Go on YouTube, look at that stuff. Invite Marjorie Tyson, Nancy, Feng and Nancy out to lunch. Eduardo, say, Eduardo, hey, let's go grab a beer. 
pick their brain. What do you do? What is it that you do? Christina Fernot, what do you do? These people will tell you, you know, some of them won't, but some will, you know, and, and maybe you might have to give them a couple of beers so they can spill the truth out. But find out what they do and mirror them. Study, you know, I used to always meet every buyer at the lender's office to get them approved, waste an hour to find out that they're not ready or that they, they, that they will never be ready. And I would be so upset with myself. Oh my God, I just spent two hours with two prospects and there goes my whole Saturday. And then I go, what does the mother and son team do? They're always number one. What do they do with their buyer prospects? Oh, they never meet them. They go to the lender first. Then the lender calls and says, hey, they're ready to go. Okay, now that you're ready to go, come to my office in Bellflower at 10 a.m. on Saturday and we'll do a buyer consultation. Don't waste your time on those things like that. Joe, Joe, don't get upset at me right now, but Joe on a deal makes just as much money as you do. Let him earn it. Let him meet with your prospects. Trust me, Joe understands it's a numbers game. Not everybody qualifies. You know, you go door knocking a hundred homes in Newport Beach, or everybody's loaded and has amazing money and whatever. Not everybody's a seller. So just keep that in mind. Number two, train, study, practice, and do it again, do it again, do it again. These people, you could, you, I guarantee you, if you Google mother and son team, I'm not, not trying to pick on them only. There's other top producers out there. You could see pictures of them role playing. Why? They're top producers. They shouldn't role play. They make 900K a year. No, they role play because freaking Tom Brady role plays. He practices every week, three times a week, four times a week. So anyways, attend all company meetings, trainings, and events. I want you to change your mindset. I want you to change your mindset. Everything now from this day forward that you do in this business is worth $10,000. If you miss a buyer's call, you lost 10 grand. That call is 10 grand. Whatever you choose to do with it is up to you. When you make a cold call to a seller or an expired, that's 10 grand, right? Not coming to these meetings, you're losing 10 grand. Not going to corporate meetings, trainings, events, you're losing 10 grand each time. Look at it that way. I guarantee it, you will grow. You will make money. That money will one day wind up in your pockets, but you got to treat it that way. Every, every client that you don't follow up on, you lost 10 grand, 10 grand. Every client you don't follow up on, 10 grand. So every person you meet in the Starbucks line, 10 grand. Build warm and a cold sphere of influence. So if you haven't already, then a lot of you, you know, a lot of us have it. Build a warm sphere of influence, but also build a cold one. Who's the cold one? The guy at Starbucks that always hands you the coffee in the morning the McDonald's guy that gives you your, your little um, McMuffin or whatever, right? Mar Marjorie goes to a little donut place and she made a video on them. She's building her warm, sorry, her cold influence, right? Who's your warm? Your warm? That's your family, friends, people that know you already. Croissant. Croissant. There you go. No Schedule your life. Schedule your life. Uh, what, what did I say at the beginning of the meeting? Benny Chavez, and I, I, it's funny, people go, you do that a lot. You speak in third person. Benny Chavez wanted to go to the beach on 4th of July. Gavin Newsom said, no, not possible. Benny Chavez went Friday and drank on the beach. And I'm sorry that I keep saying that. Don't think any less of me. Yes, I broke the law. Okay, big deal. What do you do? But I did what I wanted to do. I scheduled it and it happened, right? Schedule your life. First, go into, into your schedule and schedule day at the beach, vacation with the family in Florida, um, vacation in Brazil, uh, round trip to uh, Dubai, whatever. Put all that in there. Then schedule you know, prospecting. Then schedule your appointments in there. And don't forget to schedule this meeting. Like I said, it is worth 10000 whether you believe it or not. And trust me, I have avoided some sales meetings before because the guy talking didn't know anything. I'm sorry, it's the truth, you know? And not to put myself on a you know, pedestal or anything like that, but trust me, I have some knowledge, guys, to share with you. I don't know at all. And I'm not this big producer guy, okay? And I haven't been around for a long time. I've only been in this business for 14 years. But you know what? I really believe in this business. I really believe that it is what I was meant to do. 
And that's why I want to know as much as I can about it. And so should you, you know, ask yourself what got you, you know, what made you want to get into real estate? You know, are you here for the wrong reasons? You know, I know that I am. I, I know now that I love it. It was what I, my destiny, but you know, in the beginning I got into it for two things. It's a joke. My, my friend made this up to make more money and work less. And so far I've achieved the second. So, you, you know, schedule your life guys. Um, you know, all, all of it should be an appointment. You know what? The day that you schedule your life, even your clients are going to start respecting you more because they're going to call you. And guess what guys, you guys are going to think this is funny, but I've done it to you. You call me and you go, Hey Benny, can I talk to you? I'll tell you, no, I'm sorry. I'm in an appointment. Guess where I'm at? I'm at lunch. It is an appointment. I go to lunch with agents in the office. We, we build a bond. We talk about ideas. I share things about, you know, my knowledge and they share something about theirs, or we just talk about the day, right? Schedule, you know, when you talk to a client and, you know, hey, can I meet you at, at, at five o'clock tonight? Oh, you know, I'm sorry, I have an appointment at that time. Can we meet at seven? Sure, that works. Maybe at five o'clock, you're just going to dinner with your husband, with your wife, right? But doesn't that sound better than, oh, I'm going to dinner with my wife, I can't. Oh God, really? No, and of course, people don't care about your time. But if you say, no, sorry, I'm at an appointment. Wow, how do you sound? You sound busy. You want something done, give it to a busy person. Number seven, follow through. Guys, we're going to go over by like five minutes at the most. I know John Greer doesn't like when we do that, but he likes to keep it concise. But uh, just a few more minutes. Follow through, guys. So wait, did, did I miss the last one? I probably did, didn't I? Oh, yeah, there it is. Sorry. Follow up, it's your job. Follow up, it's your job. You know, it, when, when, you, when you meet somebody, make sure to follow up. That's where the, the money is in the follow up. And if you ask Christina for no, she'll tell you, hey, Christina, that deal you just closed yesterday, 800,000, How, how'd you get that? Oh, I met them four years ago. Been following up, four years. Ha, huh. wow. Christina, how many deals did you close last month? Eight. Wow, did you meet those people last weekend at an open house? No, I met them over the last five years. Oh, wow. So you've been following up. Follow through. Hey, Marjorie, I'm going to, uh, uh, yeah, you want my lender's phone number? Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you after we hang up. Marjorie, uh, next day. Benny, you never sent me that lender's number. Oh, I didn't follow through. Do what you say you're going to do. If you tell a client, I'm going to send you this, follow through. Do it. Hey, um, you know, I need your, your gardener's number. You got it. When we hang up, you'll, you'll receive it. Hey, you know what? I'm not thinking of selling yet, but we'd like to get some comps. Great. I'll send them to you tomorrow. Follow through. Do whatever you promise, you know, deliver on your promise. Number eight is follow back. Marjorie. Sell it like service. Follow back. Follow back is Marjorie. On your birthday, thinking of you, right? Uh, Feng, congratulations on your award. I hope I hope you uh, um, do it again next month or something. I don't know, but follow back. So don't forget about these people that you you have serviced or have met over the last whatever time year whatever. Meet new people. Number nine, meet new people. Don't forget to meet new people. What does that mean, guys? It even means industry people. Do you know that, you know, I can't stress enough that you need to come into the office. You know, not every day, not, 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 you know, not 24 hours a day, but try to come in once in a while. Hey, Fang, what's going on? Oh, I got a new listing. Oh, where? Here. Oh my God, I got a buyer for that. Great. Let's wrap it up. Marjorie, hey, you know what? I got a new listing coming up. You got a buyer? I sure do. Great. Hey, hey, uh, um, Jolie. Um, you know what happened on my deal? Oh, this happened. Oh my gosh, this is what I did, and then, but I fixed it. Oh, wow, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. I'll think about that next time. Yeah, you, and you need to meet people outside of your office too. Network, go to our company events, go to our company trainings. I know that that's not the thing right now, but you know, when we do get back out there, network with other agents, build relationships. Believe me, um, they will come in handy one day. I just closed a deal with, with an agent. You know what he did the first week we were in escrow? He added me on Facebook. Yikes! 
right? Because now he's a Facebook friend and he, he could go on my wall and say, this dude sucks. He lied and cheated and did this and that. Look, yeah, this morning he texted me, hey, Benny, I totally forgot to get back to you last night. Hey, it was a pleasure working with you. If you ever have anything coming up that I could, you know, work on with you or, or vice versa, please keep me in mind. Thanks again. Right? There you go. So last but not least, and this is going to sound very um, repetitive, is train, study, practice. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Why? Guys, because, you know, Tiger Woods, you, you think Tiger Woods just one day was a great golfer and that was it and he never practiced again? Do, do you guys think, you know, whether you like him or not, do you think Michael Jackson, that, that, you know, I, I know a person in the music industry that watched Michael Jackson growing up recording and he said that the rest of the Jacksons would go to the park and play football or soccer or something and Michael would stay in the studio working on himself, working, how do you do that note? How do you do this? How do you do that? The greatest football players, guys, Tom Brady, right? What did Coach Bill Belichick say about him? He works hardest on himself. That's why he's so great. He, he wasn't born that way. He just trains and practices and works and studies and does it again and again and again. So, you know, I know that this might sound very basic pre-agent, um, you know, stuff that you should be doing, but we all need it. We, we can't forget that we need to train, study, practice and do it again and do it again and do it again so um again guys hopefully it wasn't too short and brief and to the point but i just wanted to, to stress that a lot that you know now more than ever you know you, you could be at home reading your scripts to your mirror you know um you you need to practice and prepare you need to be ready um hey marjorie what are the rates today i'm not a lender no uh, you know what benny the rates are uh, 2.75 FHA. Oh, wow. You're a really good agent. No, I was just at my 10 a.m. meeting today when Joe talked about 2.7. Of course, you're not going to tell your client that, but right. But oh, the rates, uh, I think they're in the threes. No, come on. Come on. Hey, um, you, you know, uh, what, what is probate? Oh, well, let, let me, let me share, you know, uh, oh, how's the market? Oh, it's doing great. No. Well, you know, Marjorie, um, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, it all depends on what you're trying to do. What are you looking to do? Are you looking to buy or are you looking to sell? Oh, no, I just wanted to know what the market's doing. Oh, well, you know, actually, it's, it's doing pretty well. There's a lot of buyers. There's a lot of activity. Most of the homes in my office have been selling over asking price. Um, you know, on, on average, we've been selling about 20 homes a month. So it's actually pretty good. You, you know, um, the news says that it's not good, but it is, and prices are holding steady. Oh, okay, great. So, you guys, you got to practice, train, study. Um, YouTube, oh my gosh. I mean, you could learn how to play a guitar on YouTube. Go to YouTube, put real estate training. You, I wouldn't be surprised if you run into me. So, um, with that said, guys, go ahead and have a great week. Please, please, if you do one thing, is don't let this media tell you that real estate is off because it is not off. Um, and, and real quick, just going back to the guy who climbed Mount Everest, you could die moving or you could die by laying there. Okay. And like I said, guys, we're all going to die. Okay. There's, there's tell them that Eduardo says the less they work, the better it is. <laughs> This, guys, it, it, Eduardo was just saying that the less you guys work, the better for him because he'll have less competition. Look, the, the bottom line, guys, like I said, in the manager's meeting this morning, they said somebody found a guy doing open houses in um, Huntington Beach, right? And somebody said, oh, my God, he looks desperate, right? And another agent said, well, maybe to the public, he looks like he's the only one working, right? People have different perceptions of things. Uh, I've shared with you guys, I think it'd be pretty nasty if you're calling, hey, you want to sell, you know, because cause it's a little inconsiderate with what's going on. But by all means, uh, you know, the people that you already know, reach out, you know, uh, um, right now, what a great conversation starter. Hey, have you considered refinancing and possibly buying an income property? Rates are 2.75 right now. 
that that's unheard of, you know? Um, maybe it might be something that we need to talk about. So um, anyways, with that said, does anybody have any questions? I noticed here, uh, all right. Um, any questions, guys, please feel free to unmute yourself. No? All right, everybody. Well, thank you for being on the call. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and have a great week. Um, please stay safe. You know, wear your mask wherever you need to wear them. Um, remember to wash your hands and sanitize, but the show must go on. So make it a great week, everybody. Good luck to you. If you need anything, we're here to help. Thank you, Benny. Thank you.